Good morning, everyone. I'm really pleased with uh, how we finished up spring ball last Saturday. We had practice 15 um, last Saturday and, and uh, had a little scrimmage at the end. Most of it was just practice, but uh, I look over the totality of what we accomplished over those 15 practices. And then prior to that, uh, our winter conditioning, it's it's a strange year because we there is no break. We didn't have spring break. We didn't have any time really off. We jumped right into winter conditioning when the guys got back. And then right from winter conditioning, went to spring ball, which was really good, I thought, for us uh, as a staff to keep the guys around. And we went through 15 practices and went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, early morning. So the guys were here by 530 in the morning, getting themselves taped and ready and meetings and quick breakfast to get out on the field. And then Tuesday, Thursday, we had meetings in the morning as well. So it was a grind uh, for the guys, for the coaches, for the players, but uh, a really productive time that we spent and uh, uh, really pleased with the progress that we've made through 15 practices, some areas of, of, of strength that I really like. I think our offensive line uh, has just come leaps and bounds from, from where we were last year at this time when we had all the new guys and didn't have spring ball. But uh, um, that's just one area that uh, really excited about the growth there. And um, I know you'll have questions about the other positions. So we'll just start off with them. We'll start here with Derek. Yeah, Coach, you, you kind of touched on the offensive line, but I guess what other areas do you feel like you made the most progress this spring? Um, there's probably not an area we didn't make progress, um, but I, they just stick out because of how new they all were last year. I, a guy that just jumps out at me, two guys really, um, Cooper Beebe uh, had a phenomenal spring, continues to develop and get better. Uh, and, and will be a guy that we can count on. Cooper plays so many different spots. The only thing he doesn't play for us right now is center. He's playing both guards and tackle spots and, and really versatile and, and had a great spring. And then Christian Duffy um, has really come into his own. We've kept him on the right side and had him play right tackle and improved his body, improved his technique, and uh, really pleased with him. Our fullbacks, tight ends, continue to, to improve and get better. Um, you know, it was good to have, you know, stable of running backs, quarterback, uh, position is, is really stable, really excited about the, the young players on top of what we have with Skyler coming back, uh, uh, defensive line linebackers, got a lot of new faces there, uh, but guys are doing a nice job. The only area that we probably were down a bunch of guys still was in the secondary because we, I think we had three or four guys that, that. Uh, we see as contributors in the fall that weren't able to go through spring ball because of some surgeries that they had at the end of the season. I asked this to Coach Riley last week, so I, I wanted to ask you too. Um, you talked a little bit towards the end of last season about some of like accountability issues that kind of plagued your program and that were kind of culture centered. How far along do you think you came in that capacity this spring? Well, we've come a long ways and, and we Met, met on those things uh, as a staff throughout December and January before the guys got back and uh, really came up with four core values of discipline, commitment, toughness, toughness, and being selfless. And those four uh, core values we spoke about every day um, with our team at practice in position meetings in leadership meetings. And uh, uh, the guys really did a great job of taking ownership and holding each other accountable. And uh, we had a tremendous um, off season with regards to um, the little things, not missing meals. Uh, I think we were at 99 point something as far as the uh, meal accountability of kids not not missing any meals up there, to be honest with you. Uh, better with academics, better with tutors, better with mentors. Um, and it, it starts with uh, your peers uh, holding you accountable. And uh, so we, we've got a long ways to go, but uh, you know, with all the things that happened in, in 2020 with COVID and everything else, um, really pleased with where we started at the end of January to where we're at on, on April 4th or whatever that Saturday was. Um, but obviously we have a ton of work in front of us. Okay. Last one for me, coach. And have you been able to solidify anything behind Skylar Thompson in the QB pecking order, or, or is that something you kind of want to determine in fall camp? Well, Will ran with the ones uh, all all spring because Skyler just threw some seven on seven. And um, I, I don't know when Skyler will be cut loose to do everything from a team standpoint on captain's practices in the summer. Um, but uh, we hope that'll happen enough in the summer that he'll have uh, 
you know, some of the rust knocked off of himself, but uh, I think he's just excited about Will Howard's growth. Uh, you know, he got thrust into a, a role that I don't think any of us expected uh, him to be in uh, for eight games and eight plus games last fall and did a really, really nice job uh, and learned from the experience, had some growing pains, but uh, you, you see his body, you see the way he throws a football, see how much stronger he is, uh, the good weight that he put on, excited about the progress that that he made. I look at Jaron Lewis, one of the most improved guys on our football team, uh, as far as just the game is slowing down for Jaron. Um, excited about uh, Jake Rubley, a young kid that just came in and is learning our system, but is a really, really smart kid uh, that uh, has has a lot of talent. And uh, Max Marsh, uh, another quarterback that, that came in uh, last year that let our scout team did a great job. He's improving. So that room we're really excited about uh, because we have uh, depth uh, and we have, you know, different classes. We have somebody that's a six year super senior to, uh, to freshman. Thanks coach. Fitz. Hey coach. Um, how, how important was it or what were the benefits of having Skyler around for the spring kind of unexpected that he'd be in this position right now? Well, the benefit for him is to throw to moving targets uh, rather than just uh, throwing in the training room or throwing uh, out on his own, uh, maybe with a with an athletic trainer or something. He was able to be cut loose to be able to do non-contact drills. Well, we're not tackling our quarterbacks right now in the spring anyway, but we didn't want him having to step up in the pass rush and, and get knocked around. So he just did the seven-on-seven seven, um, periods, and I think it really lifted – uh, the football team to say, okay, he's not far from being totally um, cleared on, on his rehab uh, as well as just having him engaged like that um, made will better, made Jaron better, made the young quarterbacks better um, because he was able to watch himself on film. And I, I sit in on a few of the quarterback meetings. It's great discussion they have with coach Klein uh, and it's a really healthy room, but uh, just to have him back and Going through cadence and stuff, I think helped Noah, helped our offensive line, even if it was in walkthrough periods. Uh, just excited to see how how quickly he's progressed and how how much further ahead he is than a lot of people planned at this time. And you mentioned it earlier, or some one of the coaches did. Can't tell he had surgery. It, it, watching him last Saturday was absolutely remarkable how how strong his arm and arm is at this point. How surprising is that for you? Um just because I saw how hard he worked in the, in the fall and, and winter. And even as the spring got going, I'm not surprised um, because he has such tremendous work ethic. And I, I think he, he, he was sore more than um, more than any of us thought he was going to be because he hadn't done that, but uh, we increased his workload uh, in the middle of those practices, maybe six through about nine or 10. When I say increased his workload, we typically do one period of seven on seven or one segment of seven on seven in practice. And from practice four or five on, we did two segments so that he could get a lot of throws. And he was averaging between maybe 60 and 80 throws uh, a practice, which we were originally thinking maybe 30 to 35 each, each practice when we were able to double that, if not more. And so uh, I think it gave him a bunch of confidence that hey, I can cut it loose and go play. Let's flip it over to the defensive side of the ball. You had some really substantial losses with departing players on the defensive front and your linebackers. How much progress did you make in that area? Made uh, tremendous progress. Uh, excited about uh, the depth we've created in the defensive line. We're always a team that wants to play a number of guys in the D line. Uh, Eli Huggins, who had a tremendous year last year, uh, playing at a really high level, uh, taking over that leadership role that Drew Wiley had had last year. Excited about Eli. Uh, Jalen Pickle had a really good spring. Uh, Timmy Horn, a uh, transfer from Charlotte's going to be an impactful guy. He's a, he's a difference maker up front with his size and, and athleticism and ability. Uh, D. Hence provides a lot of flexibility and depth there. He's done a really nice job. Um, defensive end. Uh, Felix Anaduque is probably the biggest surprise for me. I, I know how strong he is. He just needs to continue to have the game slow down for him mentally, uh, but he plays with a tremendous motor and does a really, really nice job for us. Spencer Trussell is, I think, ready to step into another role, uh, an expanded role that will help us. Um, at linebacker, 
the, the one that stands out to me that you guys do know about is Daniel Green. I thought Deuce had a phenomenal spring and uh, really took over a lot of the leadership uh, of, at that position. Cody's a really good leader, but Cody was out most of spring um, due to an injury, just did some seven on seven as well. But Daniel Green did a really good job. And then we have a bunch of young linebackers. Uh, you throw Wayne Jones into that mix between Wayne and, and Ryan Hennington and Austin Moore and, and Eric Munoz and Nick Allen. Uh, the kind of list goes on and on. There's a lot of really good players there. Um, that just haven't had the experience. And so uh, I'm excited about the depth in that room. Backing up and speaking of depth, that defensive end spot almost is overwhelming in how many guys you were kind of shuffling in and out who seem to be really effective players. Yeah, and we need that. We need to be able to have guys taking 30 and 35 snaps and not 60 and 65 snaps. And, um, you know, you didn't talk about Bronson Massey, who's played a ton for us, and Cleed Duke that's played a ton for us. Those guys um, are, are going to be there. But, uh, you know, Brendan Mott's another guy that's uh, that jumps out at me that has had a really, really good um, really good spring uh, on the edge as well. Uh, so I, I like the depth we have. Um, we're going to play – eight to 10 guys every, every week. And um, that, that'll make us stronger. One final thing. How did Cade Warner come up, uh, come about? Can't talk about that one. Oh, we haven't right. signed him yet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Else? Hey, Chris, it looked like you guys were playing at least some uh, three line sets there on defense uh, on Saturday. Uh, just, just what is it a, that's appealing to you about that formation? Well, we did that some in the um, in the fall as well. We did it, and it's more of our third down stuff. Um, and that's what we were doing in the spring as well as just working on a lot of different third down packages. Uh, we did it a lot more towards the end of the season. Uh, Baylor's when we really started to get into our third down stuff with some three down. Um, we just didn't have enough um, bodies uh, in, in the secondary uh, this spring, but uh, it's – it's what we've kind of always done on, on third down situations. And that's kind of what we're looking at is to do it more on third down, just to try to get some more speed on the field. How much does that change that, uh, you know, fourth spot on the line when somebody's standing up as opposed to putting his hand on the ground? Well, it helps you guys like Khalid Duke and, and Nate Madlock. Nate's another one that I didn't mention, but Nate had a tremendous spring that has really changed his body. Gives a guy like Nate and, and Khalid opportunities to drop, gives him opportunity to rush. Um, you know, and, and gives them, you know, more of an edge to be able to take and, and uh, excited because those guys can be rush guys, they can be drop guys. And, um, you know, it just gives us some more versatility. And it, it, at least from where I was standing, it seemed like you guys have uh, added some depth at running back, especially with Joe back. Do you feel like you have some more versatility and depth there behind, behind Deuce just this spring? Well, we need to. Um, it was good to have Joe Irvin back. Uh, he did a really nice job um, picking up where he left off as a as really a true freshman. Um, we're excited. Joe's going to do some really special things for us. He catches the ball out of the backfield well. He runs extremely hard. He blocks well. Uh, I thought Jacardier Wright had an exceptional spring. Um, we need um, uh, a big back in there uh, at times, and, and Jacardier ran extremely hard. The game is starting to slow down for him as well, as far as understanding not only the, the run reads and stuff, but catching the ball out of the backfield. And then uh, probably the most impressive, important thing is the pass protection. And I thought Jacardi did a really good job there. So um, it's nice to have depth. Um, obviously, Deuce is a special, special player. Uh, Keon Mosey did some really good things as well. So uh, excited about the depth we have at running back. But uh, last one for me, maybe this isn't uh, all that uh, special, but it, it seemed like Julius Brents was completely unafraid to get right in your face and defend right at the line of scrimmage. Um, what, what is it about him that allows him to be able to do that? Well, he's 6'3 and 200 pounds, 205 pounds, and uh, um, is a really physical corner, um, really smart, uh, understands the game really well, uh, will have an immediate impact in, in our secondary already a really good leader amongst the group has fit in really well with everybody, offensive kids, defensive kids, doesn't matter. Um, Julius is just one of those guys that has that uh, charismatic personality, that it factor, uh, one of the most fun guys to be around. And, and we're excited because Julius is going to add, uh, add great value to us in the secondary. All right. Thanks, Chris. You bet. 
John. Yeah, Chris, I wanted to ask about the receivers and just where you're where you're at with them coming out of spring and how you felt like they did throughout practice. Well, it's a, it's a work in progress at receiver. We didn't have um, Sebastian Taylor. Everybody knows he was still out. We didn't have Landry Weber. Um, he was out from a, a season-ending surgery. We didn't have Seth Porter for a good chunk of it. Seth uh, got banged up but came and practiced a little bit. So um, it was Philip, it was Malik, and then it was a lot of other guys that were given opportunities to see uh, how we can grow the depth there and what's what's maybe the future. Um, I thought Keenan Garber had a really good, uh, really good spring. Keenan needs to be an impactful guy for us. He's uh, really, really fast, uh, catches the ball well, uh, needs to be crisp in his routes uh, and be able to take the top off the defense because that's what he he can do. Uh, and was excited about uh, Keenan and, and just needs to continue to grow and continue to, to learn the route tree and, and keep doing a, a good job of pushing himself um, to be better because we need Keenan to be a good player for us. Um, Eric Hommel did, did some really good things um, that I could see out there just as a stable guy. Uh, a, a lot of other guys were learning about Ty Bowman as a true freshman, did some, did some good things. He just continue to learn how to play the position. Um, but, uh, you know, Malik and Phillip are the two guys that kind of every day um, you saw some splash plays out of, and, and whether it was Skyler throwing it to him or, or Jaron Lewis or Will or, or whoever else, um, it was fun. We threw the ball a lot more this spring uh, by design to get uh, quarterbacks a lot more, a lot more throws uh, with Skyler's situation. And so we needed more work in the secondary and, and with the, with the linebackers and dropping our, our, our seven guys, we need to get more work anyway. Uh, so it was good, good spring from from a pass game standpoint. With Malik in particular, where have you seen him progress the most from last year? Just making plays and being consistent. Um, Malik's a repetition guy, and um, he missed an awful lot of time last year, whether it was COVID related or anything else. Um, getting into a rhythm of practice when Malik practices consecutive days. Um, and gets into a rhythm. He's one of the best receivers, I think, in the Big 12. And uh, uh, he made some really splash plays uh, throughout camp and, or throughout the spring ball. And whether it was whether it was on crossing routes or tough catches or vertical uh, down the seam or, or in post routes, um, it's something we have to have out of Malik. Malik, we think, is a really special, talented player uh, that uh, has tremendous – uh, upside and ability. We've got to keep Malik healthy. He's got to do a great job taking care of his body, continuing to get stronger, continuing to get um, a little bit more weight on. But um, when Malik uh, practices, um, our team at a high level, our team is really, really good because it complements uh, what our run game can be. I know injuries have played a big role in what you guys are having to do at nickel throughout the spring, but what in an ideal world, what, what does that look like when the fall comes around? Great competition. You know, when you look at the nickel position, the free safety, the strong safety, you know, Jerron McPherson's a tremendous football player that will will line up at, at strong safety and play a ton of football and play at a high level again um, at nickel. Uh, I'm not sure what that looks like. We didn't have uh, a bunch of competition there in the spring at free safety. Uh, Rush East um, really upgraded. Uh, us in the secondary with depth, with a guy that we think can be a starter, with a guy that can be an, uh, an impact. He played a ton of football in the past, and you could see that uh, on the field. Tremendous tackler, um, quarterback of the defense, can do a lot of really good things. He just needs to continue to learn our system. And as he continues to learn our system, he'll feel more and more comfortable communicating, but uh, was really excited about uh, – Russ in the secondary and how he can help us at the safety spot. We were down Ross Elder, uh, who missed the spring. We were down Hunter Henry, who missed the spring. We were down Amaris Brown, who missed the spring. We were down TJ Smith that missed the spring. So there's four guys that fit somewhere, whether they're nickels, strong safeties, free safeties, but they missed the spring. So we have to, um, those guys have to do a great job of, of getting together when it's captain's practices and some of those other things and getting their bodies ready to go because uh, they miss so many repetitions, but all four of those guys we see somewhere in the mix in the fall. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Eric. Yeah, coach, I think you still have a few spots remaining that you could 
plug in maybe more transfers, just, you know, uh, more counters there. Is that something you're still open to the idea of? And I imagine some of that might be in the secondary. I'm not sure where it's going to be at right now. You just never know. Um, but we do have a, a few spots. There's always, we're always looking to, to enhance and improve the football team um, as, as everybody's going to learn throughout the, the spring uh, at different institutions, people are going to come and go with the, with the transfer portal, the way it is. Um, there's just going to always be roster management situations. And so um, we're looking for the right kind of guys to fit. I, I know this, we took five kids that transferred uh, into our place that semester in January, and we hit five home runs when it comes to character and integrity. Uh, those kids are going to help our football team, um, and they're going to play for us, and they make our locker room better. They make our team better uh, because all, all five guys that we brought in um, at, at semester are, are really impactful. Uh, Daniel Imator Bebe is one of the most special, talented kids I've seen, and what a wonderful kid to be around. He's, he's made our team better because of his work ethic and always having a smile on his face and being engaging with the younger tight ends, with the younger quarterbacks, as well as the older guys. He's a guy that's going to have a huge impact as well. There's a rumor or I guess, you know, speculation that recruiting could open up uh, in the month of June. What are you anticipating that looking like? Do you have an idea of what to expect? I think we're going to learn more in the middle of April from what I understand. I, I would say they'd probably allow players to come to campus, um, but I don't think we'll be leaving campus. So whether that means camps, uh, which we hope are, are we're able to have, and that's what we're counting on is to be able to have some camps um, so we can get an evaluation on guys as well as unofficial and official visits. We think the month of June is going to be really busy. I, I don't see, um, us being able to go off campus. It'd be great if we could go to some camps and stuff ourselves. Although as a dad, I'll be able to go to a few camps because I've got to get my boy out and around a little bit too. But uh, um, we're excited um, to be able to welcome some student athletes back to campus. I think everybody's ready for that. Um, I think it's important um, for all of us, whether it's a student athlete to us as coaches to uh, the communities that they're going into, I think we're all excited to be able to have kids come and, and visit your campus. Appreciate it, Coach. You bet. Last one here, Kellis. Um, now that uh, anybody 16 or older can get vaccinated, how are you guys handling that with the team? Do you want everybody vaccinated by the fall? We absolutely do. Uh, we'd like to have them vaccinated before summer. We don't know how that's going to look. I know that um, Lafine Health Center is is starting to uh, put out some things to vaccinate a lot of the students on campus um, or have the ability to. Um, we are encouraging our kids um, to go get a vaccine. Um, almost all of us coaches have had have had two shots now and are, are fully vaccinated. Um, we, we know the value. We know how important it is. We're going to keep pushing it. Um, we hope there's not anybody that doesn't want to get vaccinated. We need to do a great job educating uh, our, our players on the benefits of, you know, maybe eliminating some social distancing, eliminating some mask wearing, eliminating some quarantines, all those things um, so that we can get herd immunity so that we can keep pushing past this COVID phase because uh, uh, everybody wants to get back to some normalcy and the best way to get back to normalcy is to get everybody vaccinated. So if you have a chance, everybody out there to get a shot, boy, please take it and, and let's get this uh, COVID uh, behind us and, and keep moving forward and get uh, everybody vaccinated that can.